Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, September 16th, 2019. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, all right? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that just because this is a message dated for the 16th of September, it doesn't mean it has to resonate at that time okay these messages are meant to be timeless time is an illusion energies are fluid so if you're whenever you're watching this reading and it resonates for you then that is the message for you at that time in your life yes i hope everyone had a really great weekend um we just came out of a full moon it was on friday on the 13th no less um, I just want to go ahead and say that this full moon sucked the big one, you guys. Like, it was in Pisces, so, um, and it was extremely emotional. And I, and as of the time that I'm recording this reading, I'm obviously I'm recording it on the 16th of September, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and say it still sucks. It's still emotional. Um, I mean, oh my God. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. It was a really emotional full moon, all right? And, and I'm kind of glad it's subsiding that we're coming out of it. Don't get me wrong. All the things that we've experienced, the emotions, the purging and all that, it was all necessary, okay? All of it was necessary. Um, it all happened for a reason, all right? Um, but the good news is that we are coming out of it, right? We survived. <laughs> we survived. So, okay. So, um, I, I, I have our pre-shuffle here and I was kind of feeling inclined to do like a post full moon discussion anyway. And spirit was saying, yes, that's direct. That's the direction that we're going in. All right, great. So here, what, here is what we have in our pre-shuffle. The very first card that, uh, that made its appearance here is the four of pentacles. And it is in fact reversed. Okay. So full moon energies in full effect. What is that you say? Releasing. Oh yes. Releasing the heartbreak. Three of swords okay then we have the nine of pentacles with the king of pentacles now um this is a masculine and a feminine figure all right but we are not talking about anyone external to you if this is something that you are if this is a message that you're resonating with right now then we're talking about you we're not talking about anyone else okay this is your masculine and feminine aspect this is your your independence and autonomy, sovereignty, however you want to say it or, or describe it or view it, represented by the Nine of Pentacles, and your stability, your foundation, your steadfastness is what I'm hearing with the King of Pentacles, your um, how do I want, I just, I'm looking for the right grammar, the right grammatical way to say this, but it's like, it's, it's, the, the King of Pentacles is representing your, um, well manifested nature this is you being grounded and secure in your life in yourself and what you stand for and what you dream of this is you sitting in your abundance this is you especially with the ox here represent standing right there this is you being able to take anything okay the king of pentacles um is the archetype of taurus okay and i do see taurans me being a Taurus, a, uh, a Taurus sun in Western astrology, I do see Taurans as fucking tanks, man. We can take damn near anything. Um, and it's true, you know. We're kind of like, Taurans are kind of like the workhorse of the Zodiac, I guess you could say sometimes, mainly because they can just, they can carry such a heavy burden and still be okay, okay? And that's really what I'm seeing here in this King of Pentacles. What I'm also feeling is this autonomy, this Nine of Pentacles energy, is very much hard won. Very, very, very hard won. Overall energy is the Ace of Cups, and it's the nighttime scene. On the other side, we have the Seven of Pentacles, all right? So... Um, you're definitely facing, you're facing your harvest right now. We're still in Virgo season. 
um, in Western astrology, as, as far as Western astrology, astrology goes. And we're still kind of harvesting, all right? We're going to be harvesting throughout Virgo season. And this is literally you. This is what you're doing right now. You're standing here looking at this harvest. And this harvest doesn't really have isn't just about, you know, what has been going on, I want to say for like the last six months, for example. This harvest that we're facing, that we're dealing with, even that we're purging, is years upon years. This could be a full lifetime's worth of um, seed sowing that you are now harvesting. This could be past lifetimes worth okay this can be this could be ancestral all right this is a deep deep purge a deep cleansing okay the beauty in all of this what i'm getting with the ace of cups here is that you are coming to terms with yourself you're coming into a position where you can in fact love yourself more on a deeper level um, it is a nighttime scene Sorry for all the sniffling, you guys. Um, it is a nighttime scene on the Ace of Cups. And what I'm kind of getting here is... Um, oh, I just recognized. I just saw that. Okay, what I'm getting here is like the, the, the sun has gone down right now. Um, it's a bit of a nighttime scene, but the nighttime is representing the internal reality. Okay? And... <laughs> there is... An individual here that kind of looks like the Knight of Cups. Do you see him? He's kind of lurking in the distance. We can call him, I don't know what we can call him, but um, there may be some suitors, there may be some people that may want to check on you, that may want to, that may be taking interest in you right now, but it's like you're not really, you're not really having it. And it's not like you're being mean about it. It's just like, I'm just not trying to associate with people right now <laughs> for some of you for others of you there could be someone that's out there watching you that could be attracted to you in this which is kind of weird but that could be attracted to you in this kind of huh, vulnerable state take that as a cause confirmation and it's interesting because what i'm picking up on here with this individual that's yeah you know, because also what this means in the in the in the book okay they, they, they describe this as this individual that's coming forward here it's co he's coming forward in a nighttime scene you never really know you can't really see all the details there Okay, so you, the book kind of cautions you their description of this side of the card is it's cautioning you against, you know, revealing too much or getting too wrapped up, getting too caught up because, you know, everything's not all that clear. It is nighttime, right? So this could be, this really could be, for some of you, this could be an individual that may be wanting to take advantage of you while you're in a little bit of a vulnerable state. It also doesn't have to be so morbid. It could also be someone that is recognizing your vulnerability, recognizing your ability to go within, do some deep excavation, some deep emotional work, and still be so strong and poignant and, and on point and have it all together and blah, 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 or at least it looks like it. But I'm going to say you do have it all together because just because you're going through an emotional time doesn't mean that you're 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 a complete mess you know you i still feel like we're able to keep it together and still be with grace that's what it is it's with having a sense of grace about you even though you're going through a tough emotional time this individual that could be coming forward towards you may really just want to be supportive of you okay so just keep that in mind but you know Keep your eyes peeled, keep your eyes open, you know, and all that, all that interestingness. And that also it could just be a really specific message. <laughs> yeah, but there is a sense, whatever that, res however, whatever, that, whatever that means for you, there is a sense of being attractive, being extra beautiful to certain individuals right now. Most of that has to do with your independence, though. Nine of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, all right? I, I'm not going to lie. It has a lot to do with your sense of self-worth and independence, okay? All right, kids. 
So with that said, that's our pre-shuffle. Let's get into the rest of the reading here. Mm. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, September 16th, 2019. And also, actually, I'm going to guide this a little more specifically. Let's do, let's do a post-full moon chat. Please. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're going to give this five shuffles. And then we'll see what we've got for us. Today, Monday, September 16th, 2019, to post full moon in Pisces, three, four, and last one, five. All right, Spirit, what do you have for us today? What would you like to discuss with us a today? Monday, September 16th, post full moon in Pisces. What have you got for us? What have you got for us? All right, my eyes are closed can't see that that is yet. Do I want to go another round? I do. We're going to go one more round, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. What else do you have for us, Spirit? Monday, September 16th, 2019. That's enough, they say. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh boy. All right. There's that seven of pentacles again. Ooh, and we've got the king of cups on the other side with his back turned. I just recognized, I just realized that there is a dolphin. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. There is a dolphin here. Sorry, guys, if that was really loud. But there's a dolphin on this card. I never realized that. That's cool. And then on the other side, we have the Seven of Pentacles. Yep. And um, at one point, Justice flashed me. And it was the, the other side of Justice where it was, where it symbolizes a bunch of injustice. And looky here. We've got the Hierophant. We've got the Seven of Swords. We've got the Six of Pentacles, which is falling out sideways. And then we also have the Four of Cups, which was falling out sideways as well. So, um, okay. Well, I'm, I really don't know who this is for. And we're kind of, I did ask we did say that we're going to we're doing a post full moon reading post full moon discussion okay um so again i don't know whom this is for but i'm just going to give you what i'm channeling here the, the first thing that i got from the seven of pentacles was someone someone has made their bed and now they need to lay in it You reap what you've, you're, you're reaping what you have sown. And we could be talking about a masculine individual here. Ooh. Um, okay. Uh, we could be talking about a man, or we're talking about an individual that is masculinely oriented. King of Cups. But it feels like this King of Cups is sulking. 
with his back turned. I want to look at the book really quick because I just noticed I just noticed that dolphin. I'd never seen that I had never seen that dolphin before. Um, and I want to see if they say anything about it. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna read this to you guys. By daylight, the king looks out towards the open sea. Light clouds blow in the soft blue blue sky. A smiling dolphin swims behind his throne. If the big secret the queen of chalices is keeping is a core of independence, the king's big secret is his playfulness. Most people may have the impression that he lives his life in a state of spiritual earnestness, even so, uh, solemnity. So, solemnity. Yeah, solemnity or a solemnness, I guess. He's actually quite joyous in his spirituality, happy in his love, and sometimes just plain silly. Those who are closest to him benefit from his lightheartedness, though those in the outer circle may know only his queerer ways of wisdom. I'm sorry, are his quieter ways of wisdom. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Yeah, playfulness is key here for this king, but at this point, I think what he's realizing is somebody has been taking, or someone, some circumstance has been taking advantage of him. That's what I'm feeling. Um, and whoever this is, if this is you, if this is someone else that you are connecting to, Someone, whoever, whomever this person is, they're realizing that they have played right along into it. But it's because of what, the, it's what they were taught, the Hierophant. There's a lot of masculine, masculine energy coming through here. First with the King of Pentacles, now with the Hierophant and the King of Cups. Um... Now, the Hierophant talks about indoctrination, it talks about conformity, it talks about the patriarchy, it talks about university, religion, establishment, it talks about society, societal standards, societal norms, familial norms, tradition. It also talks about teaching and learning. And what I'm getting here is someone is realizing the deception in this. I'm sorry, I wish the lighting was better, but... It's a little on the dark side, but that's okay. Um, there was, there absolutely was deception here. Absolutely was deception here. Someone has been trying to get away with something. And either you or someone else you're connected to is realizing this. But you see, it's a little, it, mm, I'm feeling it's a little too late. We have the Six of Pentacles and then we have the Four of Cups. Missed opportunities. Unrequited love, boredom. Um, even though it's not this side of the card, because what I'm uh, what I'm getting, I'm feeling a sense of a ship has sailed. All right, and that's this side of the card. But what we're looking at is the an individual who's sitting here on the shore, basically watching this ship sail away. Because there was a lack of reciprocity. Six of Pentacles. Unrequited love here. A missed opportunity. A missed opportunity for love. Now, this is either you that is facing this, or you could be the, the one who got away, we'll say, um, and you're purging this. This just this does feel like there's there's one side of the equation or the party here that is that has made their bed and that is laying in it. I do feel like it, it does feel like it's the masculine here. Okay. The good thing that I want to say about this, the good thing that I want to say is that. 
someone's becoming wiser, someone is waking up, someone is starting to see this, someone is starting to see the deception here. But to be quite honest, and this is something that I've been feeling from the Hierophant lately, the Hierophant is what it is, stands for what it stands for, and yet it's there for a reason. And I feel like what I'm hearing is it's, 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 it's set up in this way to teach us how to be independent, to teach us what true autonomy is, what true independence is, what true free thinking is, what being free really means, what being free really stands for. It's not just about being out there, doing whatever the hell you want, blah, 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 getting, all, getting money, get this, that, no. Being truly free, truly independent, truly owning your sovereignty is a real responsibility. Is something very, 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 very valuable. Is something to not be taken for granted. There is potential to really do some damage to people should this freedom and autonomy be abused. And I really do feel like that's what the Hierophant is teaching here, or is helping us realize. There is an element to this Hierophant energy that I'm picking up specifically, and they're doing a bunch of work outside, guys, and it really just got really noisy. Go figure. But hopefully you guys can still hear me well enough, but there is an energy within this Hierophant that is saying everybody has their own free will, okay? Whether you follow this or not, everybody has their own free will. And if you're going to try and manipulate people's free will from this place because you think it's okay, because there's this established energy of, well, that's always the way it's been done and it works and it's working out fine, so I guess, mm -mm 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 -mm. no, no, you are so wrong, you better think again. Because check it out. All of this established energy that's been showing you that you can control other people because you think you have some sort of authority it's a lie. It's deceptive. And you're getting, and somebody, somebody here, this is very specific, okay? I'm, I'm just, I'm channeling the message. I'm repeating what I'm hearing. But someone is getting the message now. Someone is starting to see that. Someone is now starting to reap what they've sown in that situation. Whereas the other person here in this situation who you most likely can see as, um, the individual that came through with the Nine of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles energy in the pre-shuffle, well, that person is free and is moving on, is abundant, is independent, is autonomous, knows themselves much better, has been working very, very hard on their independence, showing up in the world as who they truly are. And yet this person here is missing out in some way, I guess you can say, for lack of a better term. And I don't want to say they're completely missing out because it does feel like they have some pretty good established energy going for them. But I guess that's subjective, right? At least maybe it looks good on the surface, but... Is it really all that good? Seven of Pentacles. Like when you really look at it, when you really look at it, is it as balanced and reciprocal as you wanted it to be? As you thought it might be? Maybe as it was sold to you? Six of Pentacles. There is a deep somber in, somberness in this card, in the energy of this card that I'm feeling right now. I'm hearing what I want to say like what the energy is influencing me to say is, if only I had done things different, if only I had been more caring, been more compassionate, if only I had been more reciprocal. This is, I don't know who this is for, but this is a really specific message and I really do feel like this is what 
This is part of what's being purged in this energy right now. Okay, guys? All right, so I want to move to the clarification section now. Um, and I'm going to start with the Hierophant and the Seven of Swords here. I want to get some more clarity on more understanding for whomever, whomever is going through this. Whomever's going through this, I want to get more clarity for you here with this Hierophant and the Seven of Swords. What is this? One more shuffle. Y'all, it is 8.15 in the morning. They start across the street, this construction across the street, they start at 7 in the morning. Like, no joke. They ain't playing over there. <laughs> All right, guys. So what is this Hierophant Seven of Swords energy? Deception. Li I mean, literally just leaving people out to dry is what I'm... Well, shit. The King of Pentacles with the Page of Cups. I'm wanting to get a little bit more, actually. This feels like an apology. Uh, the, the Page of Cups, or in this case, the Daughter of Cups, is... Nothing else is coming through. All right. And the Six of Cups. Um, the... Daughter or the Page of Cups is like the dreamer energy, is also an apology. It sometimes can represent reconciliation, um, apologies, whatnot, whatever. You could see this one of two ways. Well, actually, there is a number of ways of seeing this, but the major ways I'm seeing this is number one, an apology coming towards the King of Pentacles, maybe the individual that was represented by the King of Pentacles before. Or, you could see this as this same person that we were talking about here, who represented by the King of Cups, yes, is now becoming a free thinker, a dreamer. I do want to get a little bit more here. I do want to get a little bit more. There... Also, especially with the Six of Cups that's underneath the deck here, uh, we could be talking about soulmates, um, but also I'm, I'm seeing longevity here, especially in all of the roots. You see how the roots are highlighted of this tree? I'm feeling like this is all part of the development process. Whatever you dealt with, if you're the individual that was wrapped up in this Hierophant energy, okay, and you're starting to recognize or realize how deceptive it truly is, all of that that you have been experiencing here is all part of the growth and development of your tree of life, your, your soul, okay, your, your existence, whatever, however you want to see that. I just want to get a little, a little more clarity. A little more clarity, please, for the Hierophant and the Seven of Swords. Um, wow. Now we have the Queen of Cups with the Three of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles. Very interesting. This energy has definitely been a lesson. I mean, the Hierophant stands for teaching and learning, yes, but it's definitely been a lesson. It's a lesson, a path that is leading you towards exactly what I was saying, autonomy, independence, free thinking status, Nine of Pentacles, but it's also leading you to compassion, understanding, empathy for the world around you. Three of Wands, Queen of Cups, it's part of your path towards ascension. It's part of your path towards um, understanding 
the feminine aspect through contrast, understanding the need for compassion and understanding and flowing and being free flowing. Learning how extreme rigidity is detrimental to the spirit of an individual. Um, for some of you, also, it's leading you. It's part either it's part of your path with a counterpart. Because keep in mind, we do have the King of Cups here. Here's the King of Cups. Now here's the Queen of Cups. All right. It's leading you. It's part of your path of development with a specific individual. It's leading you. Um, hearing it's helping you clear energies with a specific individual. It's helping you. It's helping your path of growth, of development towards, with a specific individual. It's all part of the journey, Three of Wands. Okay, so now let's talk about this Four of Cups, Six of Pentacles here. Four of Cups, Six of Pentacles. Uh, this just really just feels like the realization of having needed to be more balanced, more reciprocal in the give and take. That's what I'm feeling here. Just some clarity, please, Spirit. Four of Cups, Six of Pentacles. Uh, all right, but we have the Nine of Cups here. Overall energy of the moon. Mm. Oh, I don't have it. That's okay. I just realized I don't have my Lenormand deck out. I was going to go to that for some clarity, but... Somehow, this is going to lead to satisfaction. Nine of Cups. It's going to lead to wish fulfillment. But also, there are, ooh, okay. Um, but also, there could be some over drinking. There could be some indulgence trying to numb the pain here. Especially with the moon that was underneath the deck. But also, the moon is, it's almost as if the moon is revealing this. Eight of Cups. Yep. Someone is definitely walking away. Page of Wands and the Nine of Wands. Overall energy of the Queen of Wands now. Very interesting. Because now I'm seeing the other side of the equation, like the other individual here. who has gone through some, actually, I'm seeing both individuals. The other individual who was basically rejected. Okay. Um, went through a period of self-discovery, page of wands, and has walked away, eight of cups, towards satisfaction, towards fulfillment. Albeit battered and bruised, yes, nine of wands, but has basically has decided not to give up on her, on herself, himself, their lives, whatever. But now, it, but now I'm also feeling the other person is following suit in their own way. It's led to and it's influenced them to. Go through a period of self-discovery. Nine of Wands. It's not as strong as, like, say, the Hermit, because I do see the... I'm sorry, the, the, the Page of Wands. Um, I do see the Page of Wands as, like, a minor arcana version of the... Lo not the Lovers, the, um, the Hermit. Why did I want to say the Lovers? Spirit says, because we're dealing with a counterpart situation. Okay.
someone really gained or is in the process of gaining their some serious self confidence very much as how Stella uh, how, <laughs> very much as Stella getting her groove back type of energy um Perseverance, absolutely. Determination also. I am going to find, I am going to find my happiness, my satisfaction, my wish fulfillment, regardless of what it takes. I'm not going to let anyone stop me. I'm going to walk away from that which no longer serves me. And I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to get what I deserve. That's the determined energy that I'm feeling here for this side of the equation. There's more. How are we? There's another message that wants to come through. I'm going to use the Golden Universal Tarot for it. Okay. I'm just, I don't know what this is, but there, I was just looking over here. I was looking over here at the King of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups, the Page of Cups, and the Three of Wands is in between them, and they're looking right at each other. I just realized that. The King of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups are looking right at each other. Divine counterpart situation. And I'm feeling like, I'm feeling there's another message coming through. So I'm just going to let it happen. Let it flow. Uh, especially since we're using the Golden Universal Tarot. Um, this is a message directly from Spirit in terms of this counterpart situation. It's all, um, it's coming sh like straight from the angels even. Last shuffle. And we'll see what we've got. All right. High Priestess, Seven of Wands. Not, not finished yet. Okay. High Priestess, Seven of Wands. Ten of Swords. Overall energy, Two of Wands. All right, guys, so um, there is a big decision that's on the table right now. Uh, bear with me for a moment. Um, I mean, obviously, the worst is at its end. It's the, the worst has come to be. Ten of Swords. The High Priestess and the Seven of Wands. I, that's a little bit of a strange... I, I, um, I'm having trouble translating that because what it feels like is something is something's changing and I can't tell I, what I can't tell is whether you the individual that's going through this change is being uh, being uh, defensive or or, or, or um, putting up strong walls and boundaries and and being secretive about the change that's going th happening or if the universe is being secretive about it 
what I want to say here is maintain your boundaries, okay? Protect yourself, maybe even like, uh, I don't want to say this, but like almost, I, it's almost, I'm almost getting a feeling of um, maybe even isolate yourself a little bit while this shift happens. But there is very much a change in direction that's coming here. Something is unknown. The outcome is unknown. Gosh. Oh boy. I'm going to pull. I'm going to get another pull here. Because <laughs> I'm having trouble understanding what this is. What I really want to understand is the high priestess energy. Like, what do you mean by this, spirit? Because what, what I, the strongest thing that I'm feeling here is protect yourself, guard yourself while this shift happens. Oh, well, now keep in mind, though, we do have, oh, now I get it. We have the high priestess and the hierophant. which are counterparts. High Priestess here, Hierophant here. So we could be talking about masculine and feminine. So it's the feminine here that's being guarded, that's changing herself. Has gotten, has reached the end. Reached the end of this, whatever this situation is. Is, is much wiser for it, but is also guarded, blocked, defended, Boundaries have been put in place. High Priestess, please, Spirit. High Priestess. And honestly, what this feels like in the High Priestess here is an energy of, I just heard, stop doing this to yourself, um, is an energy of not allowing the same old shit to be a part of the situation any longer. I'm hearing things like either you're going to respect me or you're not going to have me in your life at all. the wheel of fortune. Changing the script, rewriting the, situ the circumstances, rewriting the situation. What I'm feeling here specifically is if you're not going to value me, if you're not going to take me seriously, if you're not going to honor the wisdom that I hold, then we have, we're not going to have anything to do with each other. Overall energy of the two of pentacles. Balance. If things are not balanced, then I will not be here. You hold wisdom, I hold wisdom. They are opposites of each other, yes, but when combined, they create everything. But if you're going to devalue me, if you're going to discredit me, if you're going to work to tell to, 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 to discredit the information that I have to bring, says the high priestess, then boundaries will be put in place. I will change the circumstances. You think you got all the manipulation power here? <laughs> you're dead wrong. But you see, says the High Priestess, I'm not going to manipulate the free will of others. I'm going to align with circumstances that harmonize with me. And you're not going to be a part of it. As long as you wish to control.
Oof. Ooh wee. All right, guys. So now we're going to get our Oracle guidance. And I mean, honestly, I could keep going with that, but I'm just going to leave it there. Again, I don't know who this message is for, but I hope this resonates for, with someone. Um, but I'm going to get Oracle Guidance from the Dragons. I really love this deck right now. I mean... Well, okay, looky here, though. Uh, I just realized this. What I was going to say is... Uh, it almost, this almost kind of feels like an ego battle between the High Priestess and the Hierophant, but it really isn't. What I'm hearing is it's creating change. It's changing the circumstances. It's changing the balance here. There has been some serious injustice. The wisdom of the feminine has been completely... Strong effort has been made to completely silence the feminine. It's not going to stand any longer. All right? Things are changing big time. And I just realized that the Hierophant and the High Priestess energies are mirroring each other. The Hierophant has the Seven of Swords. The High Priestess has the Seven of Wands. One is deceptive and one is defending. One is constantly trying to get away with something and the other is like oh hell no buddy i don't think so not on my watch oracle guidance there are a lot of sevens though i mean we have an overall energy in the first deck we have the seven of pentacles we have the seven of wands with the high priestess we have the seven of swords with the hierophant sevens are a number of luck yes but also wisdom and understanding spirituality and when you and that what that means is, this is exactly what we're here for: spiritual expansion and growth. Our oracle guidance from the dragons: we have golden orange dragon. Expand your light for ascension. Be a peaceful warrior. Help those in need. Remember your magnificence. Hold on. Hold on there, Eric. There you are. Fifth dimensional, card number six, or page 66. Here we go. Fifth dimensional golden orange dragons are part of Archangel Metatron's ascension team. Archangel Metatron is leading forward individuals Okay, Archangel Metatron is leading forward individuals who are ready to follow his path. At the same time, he is overseeing the ascension of the entire universe. The golden orange dragons who work for him are carrying the fifth dimensional ascensional bru ascension blueprint for Earth, and they come to those of us who are ready to make a difference. As soon as they see golden orange energy awaken in our aura, they breathe into us to expand it and accelerate our ascension journey. These magnificent dragons, magnificent, excuse me, magnificent dragons demonstrate dignity, peace, and power with wisdom. They are peaceful warriors, always ready to help and encourage those in need. This card connects you with the illuminated Archangel Metatron, as well as his powerful ascended dragons. You are on your ascension path, and golden orange dragons are pouring high-frequency light into your aura to attract the attention of the masters, angels, and unicorns who are guiding you. Drawing this card suggests it's time for a push forward on your ascension path. Do you need to meditate more, or examine and release old stuff, or embrace who you truly are and recognize your magnificence? magnificence. Tell these dragons what you need in order to take the next step on your journey into the higher frequencies and they will help you. Call on them for support and they will provide it. They are wonderful companions and friends. This absolutely does, does resonate with this energy that the High Priestess is bringing forward here and the change that's coming of it, the Wheel of Fortune. This feels very, very good. Oh my God. It kind of looks like this woman is pregnant on the Wheel of Fortune or actually this angel. 
can angels get pregnant? I don't think so. But this Wheel of Fortune energy feels very, very good. What it feels like is stepping into your power and releasing yourself from any sort of deceptive energy is absolutely changing the energies around you for the better. Okay? All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, yeah. I hope you guys have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.